coming up in this video. We are escorting two single women 700 miles through Mexico. Lucy gets her first taste of becoming a road dog. We get attacked by cats. And we're sharing priceless tips for your next Baja California adventure. We are Ben and Rebecca, a couple of travelers from Alaska with the dream of driving around the world with our road dog, Lucy. COVID has put a kink in our plans, so we're killing time and making the most of life in one of our favorite places, Baja, California, Mexico. These films are produced through the support of you, the Outliers YouTube community. Click join on our channel for early video releases, exclusive content, increased engagement, and so much more. Okay, Lucy, it's time for your first road trip. Let's do this. Radio check, radio check. Okay, are you ladies ready to be escorted through Mexico? Ready to be escorted through Mexico. All right, we got you covered. The journey south from San Felipe on Highway 5 is absolutely stunning. Rugged desert meets the turquoise blue waters of the Sea of Cortez. And the almost flawless road surface is a pleasure to drive on, but it hasn't always been this way. Highway 5 used to be the route most travelers would go out of their way to avoid. The long washboard and pothole-ridden road was a miserable experience to drive on. And for over a decade, it's been in a constant state of construction as crews work to completely pave it all the way down to Highway 1. This project has not been without setbacks. In the spring of 2010, a 7.2 earthquake rocked northern Baja. It cracked and completely displaced sections of the road. And then in 2018, remnants of Hurricane Rosa caused flash floods that washed out several stretches of the road and even destroyed brand new bridges. Contractors and road crews were not only battling Mother Nature over the years, they even had to endure changes in political administrations which delayed progress. Fast forward to 2020, Highway 5 is now completely paved all the way to the one. This is a major accomplishment for Baja's infrastructure as it will not only provide an alternate route south, but it opens tourism and commerce to areas that were once intentionally avoided by travelers and commercial vehicles. All right, got a potty stop in the books. And did you know that our escort service includes bathrooms? But the dogs needed it as well. Uh, yeah, this drive has been wonderful so far. It's like almost being in a uh, warp speed because that new construction is like all smooth. It's fast. It's great. I love it. 
A little Lucy from the road update. She is doing fabulously on her first road trip. For those of you who don't know, we just adopted Lucy in San Felipe five days ago. And I was a little nervous to do this whole trial by fire trip with a brand new puppy, but she's doing fabulously. She's been snoozing a lot. She likes to be looking around and seeing what's going on, eating, drinking, pottying when she's supposed to. No car sickness, no like howling while we're driving or anything. She's just happy, super happy. And my mom got us this great little satchel because she's way too small for the harness and seat belt we have for her. And I didn't want her just like loose in the car because if we had an accident, something, you know, she could go through the window. So she's been riding in her little satchel and uh, loves that and I feel nice and safe with her. She's then like attached to me so she won't go anywhere if we have an accident. But uh, other than like the sunshine, I have to protect her from the sunshine, just like we did Shelby because it's hot inside here when the sun's burning down on you. Other than that, she's doing a great job and we're making some fabulous time. Okay, we are a little north of Guerrero Negro and tends to be on the north side of the towns here, but there's military inspections. There's really nothing to be afraid of unless you're doing something wrong. And we're all in the right here. Buenas tardes. Bien, bien, ¿y tú? San Ignacio. San Felipe. Uh, mi es, mi español es. Oh, holiday, yeah. Uh, es, okay, mi, es mi madre. Oh, okay. Bueno. Sí. Gracias para tu servicio. Well, that was easy, and now the next stop is going to be the Baja California and Baja California Sur border, which I'm expecting to get our temperatures checked, and we also have to get some pesticide sprayed on the rig, which is never our favorite thing, but they do what they have to do. Decides. Nice! Monsanto, baby! Mm. Can you take that, taste that high fructose corn syrup? I'm sure it's in there. <laughs> or is it Agent Orange in there? Probably both. Despite losing an hour during the time change to Baja California Sur, we are making great progress. And instead of stopping for the night in Guerrero Negro, we are going to push further south to the town of San Ignacio. This doesn't mean Guerrero Negro is not worth stopping at. Aside from being a great place to get a bite to eat, restock on groceries, and camp, its main tourism draw has to be the bucket list experience of petting gray whales in the wild. Yes, every winter, Eastern Pacific gray whales migrate from their feeding grounds in Alaska down to their calving grounds in Baja, California. And Laguna Ojo de Libre is one of the three lagoons where this magical event takes place. How special is it to have a mother and calf willingly swim up to the boat just to say hello and socialize? Not to sound cliche, but when a 40-foot-long adult and her baby rolls onto its side to look you in the eyes, you'll never be the same again. Sushi Samurai. Wow, that does look pretty damn tasty. Okay, for the record, when you're coming through, I don't even know the name of this place, but there are two topes on the outside of town. 
And uh, this is the second one. So glad you're friends here. Yeah. We completely busted some welds on our camper and on that one. And it's unmarked. It's marked to go in the other direction, but not heading south. It's about 5.20 in the evening. The sun's starting to make its descent into the horizon over here on the Pacific side. We are about 20 minutes outside of San Ignacio, which is our final destination for the evening. One thing I really love about this stretch between Guerrero Negro and where you kind of make the curve to go back inland just before San Ignacio is the raging fast internet. Uh, you're out in the middle of nowhere, but you get fantastic LTE service for a good long stretch. So I check emails, I look at the channel, I talk to customers, I answer text messages, the whole shebang. And I'm always over here diligently just like typing away on my phone. Uh, but it's a great little thing to plan for and know that you can always uh, have that service and, and catch up after some really intermittent service on the way down from San Felipe. Now we are coming up on another military stop. Okay. Are they not checking us going southbound or what? Where's the uh, soldier? The people. How, how rough these things are, you definitely cannot speed through them. Nope. Okay. Well, I guess they're not checking anybody heading south. But uh, keep in mind, a lot of what they're looking for is heading north. So you will get waved through uh, quite a bit going south. Okay, you can take your mask off now, Ben. <laughs> All right, one more tope. Tope being speed bump. These things can be brutal. Okay. We've opted to stay at the Rice and Beans Hotel, Restaurant, and RV Hookup here in San Ignacio. This place is great because it has RV parking for us as well as hotel rooms for Mom and Linda. Abierto! They are open! Well, when you're traveling with the Outliers Escort Service, that includes meals as well. Beck packed some uh, road lunches. And if you're wondering what's for dinner, yeah, it's Mexican food. I picked up some uh, really good looking, probably rotisserie chicken that was shredded from the grocery store. Got the beans. Here's the finished product. And here we go. Shredded chicken. Dinner is served. We have margarita. We have booze if you want. <laughs> <laughs> this is Linda. Hi. How's the drive going? Pretty nice. The escort service uh, doing really well? Yeah. We're missing a lot of potholes. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Not much room on the highway to get out of the way. No, those big trucks are uh, something else, that's for sure. All right, well, dinner is served, madam. Thank you. Well, as you can tell, it's bedtime at our house and someone's all snuggled in and trying to get comfortable and ready to go to sleep. And this is how she sleeps with us every night. She's all tucked in and snuggled up. She's such a cuddler. Okay, we are calling it a night. I'm uh, going to finish watching a Harry Potter movie and fall asleep listening to all the crickets and frogs and sounds that this lush oasis of San Ignacio has. See you in the morning. Well, good morning from San Ignacio. There is one problem this morning. We've been attacked by cats. I don't know if they're feral or somebody's pets, but there are about 
five cats and they've been getting all up underneath our truck. There's another one. You guys are hungry, aren't you? Yeah, are you hungry kitties? Okay, and what about you? Kitties. Oh, hello kitties. Okay, I like animals too much. So when it comes time to start the engine, I think I'm gonna bribe them with a little food. Okay, let's go. Come on. Where's your friends? Huh? Okay, I guess you luck out. All the dog kibble is yours. Okay, just for good measure. Psst, psst, psst. Okay, no cats. After a restful night, we are back on the road. And just because we're not stopping in San Ignacio doesn't mean you shouldn't. This lush region on the spine of the peninsula feels like an oasis. If you're looking to boondock, there's a great campground located right on the river. And hidden a short distance off the highway is the charming town square that's not to be missed. The highway heads east towards the Sea of Cortez once again through a volcanic region called Tres Virginis which is still on our list of places to explore. The next town we are not stopping at on this Mad Max run down Baja is Santa Rosalia, a rather unique and out of place town with the French influence and something generally unseen in these parts, wooden structures. In the late 1800s, a French mining company arrived to exploit the region's copper deposits, and they brought in wood from the Pacific Northwest to build Santa Rosalia. The old mine is long since out of commission, and ownership has changed hands several times, but mining operations still take place here. In March of 2020, when coronavirus became a household word, we sheltered in place at a campground here in Mulahe. Hacienda de la Habana was the perfect place to lay low and wait for what was about to unfold. It truly felt like a sanctuary. Firstly, there was grass, which is rare. The citrus trees were ripe for the picking. The heated swimming pool was very refreshing, and there was even a farm stand right next door. During this unique time in history, we were surrounded by fellow travelers, all trying to figure out what to do next. After 10 days of waiting, we made a difficult decision and drove 4,200 miles to our home in Alaska. Highway 1 continues south towards one of the most beautiful places on the peninsula, if not the world, Bahia Concepcion. This enormous bay is over 20 miles long and hosts multiple opportunities to camp on white sand beaches. It's also big rig friendly, so a 4x4 camper like ours is not necessary to enjoy this slice of paradise. The next stop on our journey is in Loretto. We may only be topping off with fuel, but this is one town you don't want to miss. Our favorite place to stay is a little campground called Romanita. It's located in the heart of town and is within walking distance to almost everything. Narrow brick-lined streets and tight turns make this an unrealistic stop for larger RVs. But once inside, the campsites have shade trees or palapas and a nice community of travelers. 
The tanks are full, so it's time for our final push to La Paz and the Airbnb. On this stretch, Lucia is going to ride with Grandma, and our buddy Gabriel jumped in the truck with us. After saying goodbye to our Springer Spaniel Remy a few years ago, Gabe holds a special place in our hearts. He's four years old and has the sweetest personality. I know we've said it a few times already, but we are making very good time. And truth be told, it was a strategic push down the Baja California Peninsula. This is not by any means the best way of traveling Baja, uh, especially in this truck. You know, it rides smooth if the road is good, but with every degree of awfulness that the road gets, it, it gets equally as bad in here. And yeah, I'm sore, I'm tired, but I'm ready to hang out at an Airbnb. Okay, big bumps. Uh, all right, let's do this. Third gear. Fourth gear. We have like an hour to go, and I am ready to be there. Um, Lucy really loves her little pouch, but there are times when she just wants to be held and who am I to turn down this cute little face? I don't know, it's so impressive between the Pacific side and the Sea of Cortez side and, and uh, the vastness of this peninsula. You don't think that it would be so varied, but there really are just so many different looks to it you know you have this dry aridness like here and then back by Agua Verde more green and cooler on the Pacific warmer on the Sea of Cortez it's so neat to have so many things to explore in such a small little area small little area of land and so close to the United States that's the federale Gonna get waved on through. Oh, I gotta slow down for these speed bumps, that's for damn sure. Okay. Andale pues. Si, senor. We're getting very, very close. Ah, I'm tuckered. Me too. is actually kind of familiar to us because last winter when we were down here we camped on a beach not too far down the road from here so we're on familiar territory that's a pretty cool looking house mm -hmm. got that rooftop patio that we love <laughs> a little mild security gate I do love this whole house behind the gate approach, you know, like the Spanish colonial style that you see down here. Wow, look at that one. Okay, I want that one. There's a lot of pink. It's pretty though. I like all the outdoor living space. Ah, look, a road to okay. the beach. And here's the beautiful beach. We get to walk out our front door too. It's actually a lagoon. But so, this is still a beach. Yeah, it's waterfront. Hey, 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 that's not for you. That's a receipt. Someone's bored. Okay, so. Yep, this is it. Ta da! There's the host. Okay, these look awesome. Coming up in our next video, we share a slice of life at a Mexican Airbnb. Spend quality time with our new puppy. Find a hidden restaurant in the neighborhood. Swim with whale sharks and get screwed Mexico style. We would like to thank the Outliers community for supporting production of these videos. You guys are the best. Click join on our YouTube channel for early video releases, exclusive content, increased engagement, and so much more.